work. Just... I was an egomaniac <laughs> <laughs> who had thought of a funny joke. Yeah. I was 100% convinced that I would get a laugh. Yeah. Um, and I also knew the audience um, would not only laugh, but they would delight in the fact that they knew that something was going wrong. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Um, and I knew that it, would, it was the kind of play that wouldn't hurt it. Okay. If yeah. I was, uh, mm. yeah, it's not like it's death of a salesman. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. yeah. Um, and and I wanted to, uh, in an egomaniac way, share with the world my wonderful idea that I just yeah. thought of. Yeah, no. yeah. Nice. yeah. Um, I think and comedy is so much about embracing mistakes, especially yeah. like sketch and improv comedy. It's all like, oh, did you just trip over? Well, the whole scene's about you tripping now. Yeah. Like yeah. or whatever thing it might be, you know. And the audiences love that. Yeah, absolutely. When when somebody yells out and you react to it in character, oh my god, yeah, they, yeah. they can't, yeah. they don't even understand how that works. They love that, yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I identify with improv comedy most coming from the point of view of a musician and an audio engineer, uh, <laughs> mainly because like I, I was never skilled enough as a musician. Like I can get up and do cover songs all night. I can write my own music, whatever. Hey, you put chords and words in front of me. We're gonna jam for hours. But the people that I utterly love to work with as an audio engineer were jam bands. All right. And it, it took this real synergy, it did, not just among stage, but as an audio engineer, um, going to their rehearsals and learning, like, just the subtle movements, the small things that happen while they're playing right, right. that cue the next song and tell me, ooh, I need to bring in this delay and make right. this start happening on my end so that it translates oh, see, between the audience and the stage. May I tell the microphone that uh, you have a license plate behind your head on the wall that says Deadhead? As I, do. About jam I do. I <laughs> do. Yeah. 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 There's also one here with uh, the one of the members, of, uh, one of the only keyboardists to survive the Grateful Dead. Oh, Vince I know. They all die. It's like Spinal Tap. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. Keep going. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. But those were my favorite bands to work with because... Even though you were doing the same stuff, and I'm sure it's the same way with kids in the hall. Like I, I went out and saw y'all's performance here, and there were numerous characters that y'all brought in from the show and stuff right. like that, and there was some new material. But the fans are going to we want to see something familiar, but you're not going to want to do it in that same way night after night after night. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. In fact, we started calling ourselves Grateful Dead because yeah. uh, the um, after you do the show, you, you, like you, uh, the tour is like 30 cities usually, uh, give or take, and after the seven or eight show. We started, it would be a different scene every night. We would like go somewhere. Yeah. Said. And then we always knew when to come back. Sometimes Ex we didn't, sometimes you go too far. Exactly, exactly. But like the Grateful Dead, it didn't always work. But, no, uh, no. And but it worked a lot. It, it worked a lot. And most of the time, I mean, people are on so many hallucinogens, they just <laughs> love it. So, <laughs> but. I think comedy purists actually uh, prefer the idea that it could go wrong. Yeah. Like yeah. the chance that everything oh, yeah. could fail is the joy <laughs> yeah. of being, and I say comedy purists, because it's like, you know, the hoi polloi watching a comedy audience is like, tell me a joke, make me laugh, man. But like somebody who's like, I'm into comedy, comedy's my thing. Yeah. They yeah. like love the little bits, the like fun <laughs> stuff, all the things that are going on. I, I just thought of the craziest thing that ever happened. Uh, it was the last tour. Maybe it's not the craziest thing that ever happened. But uh, Scott and Mark were doing <laughs> it's a... True. <laughs> it's the fifth craziest thing. Scott and Mark were doing a scene. And then uh, the light wasn't exactly on them. They, they didn't set it right. So I, I, I would have just lived with it. But some guy, uh, he goes up uh, on top when they're doing the scene, and I'm from the wings, I'm seeing it. But <laughs> if that isn't crazy enough, he has a bottle of water with him. And it's a half-drunk bottle of water. And he's crawling on uh, oh, <laughs> the, the, the crawling. all the wiring and everything. Yeah. And he puts the water down, and, he, and he's so... Dumb in a way, I guess. Sorry. <laughs> and he flips the light and he knocks the bottle of water and the bottle of water lands. And I'm seeing this whole thing right between wow. Mark and Scott. And the audience just laughs because it happened. And then the funny, Mark did the funniest thing. He took the water. He, uh, oh. he, he went to Scott, drink it. <laughs> <laughs> and Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> The tech became part of the show. Yeah. Good for him. And it made, sense, oh, it made sense with the scene, because the, the scene was him trying to calm down, so he's like, calm down, calm down, here, drink this. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was. That's, that's great. Oh, uh, man, it is amazing when it all works out that yeah. way. I think that's kind of why, I know that you're saying oh, when you were a child you were, like, resigned <laughs> to doing comedy, but, like, I think in the end well, it's a better resigned. choice, you know what I mean? Because drama is so one one thing. One, I mean, like, yeah, you, the characters get to have a bit more of a, like, breadth of feeling and emotion and, and life, you know, right. I, I'll give you that. They have ups and downs the way comedy characters maybe don't. 
But at the same time, like, there's the magic of comedy and the chance of comedy. And right, right. like, you're about to step off a ledge. I go think. Ahead. I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I, just, I think the best. I was talking about this with Quentin last night. The microphone, you need to know who it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> I think he prefers Mike. He's <laughs> <Sorry, sorry. laughs> like, the microphone knows you're so Quentin formal. Is. It's okay. <laughs> you, know, you know, your friend. Uh, uh, that the best movies have everything in it. Because uh, we were talking about Woody Allen and how he went to interior uh, after he did um, Annie Hall, which was brilliant. He did a movie that was just drama, Interiors, and uh, mm-hmm. I think he got better at dramas, but he, um, because he, I could guess, being a, not Woody Allen good, but being a comedian, I could um, guess, he, I'm doing a drama now. I'd better drain all the comedy out of it. Yeah. And because of that, it was very, um, it wasn't like life, because life yeah. has everything. Whereas his next movie, Manhattan, I think it's sort of his best movie, because uh, it has comedy and, and a dramatic in a dramatic story, mm-hmm. and that's what life is, yeah. sort of, uh, yeah. comedy and a dramatic story. Well, and that's what I was going to say. I mean, for me, um, the, the, I guess some of the movies that, comedy-wise and stuff, really resonate with me the most are the, the tragedy right. that happens, like, like The Jerk. Like this poor guy, <laughs> right? Like it, he's living the best life that he knows how to live, but it is just one friggin' tragedy yeah. after another. It's a very funny tragedy. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's the but, beauty of comedy is that exactly. this character will go through uh, the and, mishap after and that's mishap just it. after mishap and, and never learn the true and a, lesson. In a drama, exactly. in a drama, you have to have the redemption. Right. The redemption has to happen, and in a comedic tragedy, technically it yeah. doesn't. Yeah. The comedy is the tragedy in and of itself, so right. you don't actually have to have the resolution of something and, good happening. And sad again. comedy. There's the uh, the original Heartbreak Kid, not the remake with Ben Stiller. Mm-hmm. No offense, Ben Stiller. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but the original one, um, I don't know if you've seen it, uh, with Charles Grodin and uh, comedy genius Elaine May directed it from 1972. It's the saddest story, really. <laughs> but um, I mean, it's a sad story. But it's hilarious uh, about a guy who who marries a woman, um, and uh, they they drive from New York to Florida. Bit by bit in the drive, uh, the, the driving their honeymoon, she's annoying him, uh, and uh, oh yeah, she keeps saying stuff like, "Whatever he does, whenever she does something to annoy her, uh, to annoy him, she goes, uh, get used to it because you're gonna you're gonna be living with the next forty or fifty. And when she says it the fourth time, goes, stop saying that. <laughs> and then when they get to- and then when they get to Miami, she gets a bad sunburn, sunburn story, um, and she has to stay in the room, and then he falls in love um, uh, with a beautiful uh, woman on the beach, and he, st- he starts giving reasons why his wife should stay in the room. Uh, I don't think you're recovered enough. And then he, uh, mm-hmm. so during his honeymoon, he's sitting on, a, uh, and it's the saddest story, because you really, because they do, f- but it's totally funny and hilarious, but you feel for the wife. Um, and she's a total three dimensional character. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's a little annoying, but she's a human being who gets really hurt. Yeah. But it's also hilarious. <laughs> but and it's sadder because it's hilarious. Well, mm-hmm. and uh, I guess my question for you, as as an improv comedian, because it, Amy always puts it as the fact, like as as myself as a technician and an engineer, everything must be ingrained into me like a friggin' ninja. Like it's got <laughs> it's got to be a reflex action when something happens. I don't. I shouldn't have to think about it. I should just do it and fix the problem. Um, right. Amy, on the other hand, as an, and it's an improv comedian, tells me her brain is like that whiteboard. And that, <laughs> sure, she may think of something and it may be there, but it's got to be able to be gone and that has to be able to be a blank slate for what's going on. Right. Oh. Now, you yourself as an actor and being <laughs> in movies and We're stuff, tense for a second. Do, do you use that concept? Do you actually build... Because, I mean, you have some iconic characters, especially in Kids in the Hall and stuff like that. And um, it does take an investment in yourself to come up with that character, to write that character. How much whiteboard and how much rote ninja memory skill is in there? See, uh, I do use my comedy part of the brain in my real life, too. But uh, I'm a hybrid of both you guys. Um, Train and improv. And, and that's uh, what we did for a few years at Kids in the Hall. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we were always dying to learn how to write. And eventually, bit by bit, we learned how to write. Yeah. And I also love structure. I'm, I'm a weird hybrid. Mm. I love a, the whiteboard, the, the clean slate. <laughs> but I also love to put structure on it. Yeah. So when I do start using the whiteboard, slowly it gets structured. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and I love I, I love improvising now. I, it's funny, in the, in the 80s, when the Kids in the Hall improvised, even when we did our written shows, we always did 11 scenes. I don't know why it was 11. Uh, well, we did nine scenes, and two of them were improvs. 
And uh, back then, only Mark McKinney and Dave Foley, I thought, uh, the, the, this is my opinion. The guys don't even know that I think this. But, <laughs> but I oh, think they will now. They, went, <laughs> uh, yeah, they were two they strong improvisers. Mm. Bruce was hilarious in an improv. Mm -hmm. Scott sometimes was an amazing improviser, and sometimes he wasn't. And I'm probably like, I, I was probably like that. Uh, but I've fallen in love with it over the past two years because uh, I'm teaching these workshops uh, that I teach, writing sketches uh, through improv. Uh, the theater always asked me to improvise with them, uh, and I've sort of fallen in love with it, and it sort of reinforced my writing. I'm straying away from your question. No, no, so, no, you're not. You're that's not what at happens all. in a podcast. You're, you're not at all. <laughs> also, straying away from the question, kind of part of the question. So it's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. Well, yeah. So, yeah, well, doing kind of you part of the question. You started with the whiteboard, and then you put stuff on the whiteboard. And then, and then, now you're talking then I started what's the on the whiteboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I, I like this whiteboard metaphor. It's a good one. I, I believe uh, I'm going to use the phrase "living in the moment." That's what the whiteboard means. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, like I live in the moment and then it gets erased and then it's done or i say to my students uh your brain has to be like an etch-a-sketch you write the yeah. scene and right. then you shake it and it's gone and does it affect your life do you find yourself yes ending in your life well i definitely feel myself yes ending in my life to your detriment and, and i also <laughs> find myself uh uh, etch a sketching moments. So, like, I'll live, we'll have a great time, and then, like, two hours later, Chris will be like, Remember that thing? And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Right. So, like, my memory bank does not keep much because right. I'm just trying to constantly throw ideas around in my head. Right. The function of my brain is just to continuously be creative versus trying right. to, like, maintain memories. Like, there's so many people who are like, <laughs> oh, I remember back in the day. I'm like, I don't care. I'm right. here now. What are you doing right now? Yeah. Like, that was great. Um, I've taken the Sorry. place of her memory bank. He just tells <laughs> I me. Remember me. All right. <laughs> I remember every nuance and everything. You're a ninja, happens. you're a whiteboard. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's how marriage goes, I guess. Yeah. I, I let that go now, you know. Two ninjas probably would rest. Right. The no. Whiteboards probably well, no, would get lost. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely. <laughs> Good lord. At least not in the dark. Once yeah. the dark comes, like. There can only be one ninja in the room. That's how it works. And here's the thing about improv. Uh, I remember when I was in Highlanders ninjas. Whatever. When I was in a Del Close workshop uh, when I was 19. Is that name dropping? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every improviser drops that name. So yeah. sure. Uh, I remember him saying that uh, that how much he loved improv. Uh, he would say how much John Belushi loved improv is better than sex. John Belushi would say. Um, <laughs> uh, but he said. Um, uh, some people think uh, improv is a means to a different end, and I think it's a means to its own end. Mm -hmm. And I remember being mm -hmm. so happy with myself because, oh wow, I disagree with uh, Del Close. Uh, the, I think it's a, I, it's everyone's opinion, it's different, mm -hmm. but I think it's a means to an end. Mm -hmm. I always intended to do it until I learned how to write. Uh, Interesting. Until I, like, that was always my intention. Um, uh, and it's, I know some great improvisers in Winnipeg, a group called Crumbs, and they do the best improv scenes ever. And because I'm whiteboard and ninja, I go, yeah. do you ever think of writing it down and keeping it forever? And they go, no, no, we're lazy. It's gone. And it makes me sad that the, the fantastic um, half-hour improv, uh, it was one whole story that I saw them do the, a few weeks ago, is gone forever. No, yeah. no, 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 no. That's I, the beautiful I, part. Yeah, that. that's yeah. the beauty yeah. of the in fact, whole. You're the Del Close. And see, and, and yeah, see, I'm yeah. in, I'm in your yeah. camp. Yeah, I'm yeah. in your camp yeah. <laughs> because I, I'm one of those people. I, I, my best friend Billy Stewart, like, used to used to write poetry and just get rid of it. And, like, I have every ev every word I've ever written. Every yeah, word yeah. he's like, ever written. Every word. <laughs> it's in like, my house every, right now. Every <laughs> song, everything. Just, and they're horrible. Everything. I'm not going to say they're but good. But you've got them. But I've got them. Yeah. I've got them. And and it's one of those, like, he he, he didn't care. It was flipping. Like, he'd write one and tear it up in front of me just to watch me react. <laughs> and it was like, oh, dude. Like, why would you do that? Yeah, like that too. Uh, people a little more like us would be uh, hoarders. Kind of. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I was when my friend saw the third turntable this weekend, and they were yeah. like, "My God, how many turntables do you have?" I was like, "Well, this is the backup for my backup." <laughs> the only reason why this is all right in a marriage is because he accepts the fact that I remember nothing. That's right. <laughs> See? She won't yeah. remember that I'm a hoarder. No, I, I won't. Even, I'll be like, "Oh, we have three turntables in like two days." So don't uh, worry about that. Right. Well, you two, explain to me why uh, uh, improv being dead is good. I did an improv in Seattle. Uh, I, all I remember, it was that I thought it was almost brilliant with Randy Dixon from Seattle. And all I remember about it, besides that I thought it was brilliant, was it was about us painting a bathroom blue. And, that, <laughs> it's, and it's just so sad to me that I, 
Um, at least the Kitchen Hall sketch, I don't, but I know that I can go on YouTube and watch it and enjoy it. I don't do that, yeah. but I know that I can. Mm -hmm. um, but that blue paint bathroom is, uh, now I'm interviewing you guys, is, uh, the show <laughs> is okay. it's that to me. So uh, why is that a good thing for you guys? Um, so for me, like my thing is, uh, with when performing, I love my audience like every time. I love them, and there are times where it's like,